Welcome back to another edition of Fly Tying for Beginners with Jim Mishura. Today we're going to tie the elk hair or deer hair caddis. And then we're going to tie my version of the deer hair caddis. The materials we're going to need. The hook that I'm using is a Lively Legs Lip Splitter. Uh, number 305 is a barbless dry fly hook and it is a standard length and black nickel. I like this hook. Very sharp. It's light. And then the other materials for the elk hair caddis. We're going to need a fine or extra fine copper wire. I would suggest extra fine. And we're going to need dubbing of course and we're going to use this is super fine dubbing and we're going to need of course deer hair or elk hair when you buy your deer hair for a for caddis you want to get the one that is sold for comparadons it's nice very nice it's a uh, it's hollow yet it's not too hollow it's gonna spin a little bit but it's gonna it's not gonna spin like you're making a bass bug so there's two different colors you got brown here and we have more of a natural gray color and you can get this in just about any color you want then of course we're going to need a hackle and we're going to use this is a dark ginger or a brown they call it it's the same thing ginger or brown and uh, that is gonna be it now I'm gonna tie the uh, elk hair but using deer hair instead of the elk hair but I'm gonna tie the elk hair caddis first thread I'm going to use is black this is just a uh, uni thread now we're gonna start the thread behind the eye and bring it back to where it would hang just past the point of the hook or to the barb had this been a barbed hook just past the bend there or past the point now the first thing we're going to put on is our rib. We're going to take our extra fine copper wire. We're just going to tie that in right there. And secure that. You can run it up and then run it back. Making a... You could leave the tag long or you can leave it short because we're going to use dubbing it's not going to matter if there's a bit of a lump there now we're going to turn our uh, hook over we're going to put our dubbing on and I'm going to make this an olive caddis one of the more common caddis I'm going to take my super fine and then you take it out and then stretch it out get a little bit of moisture on your fingers and when you stretch it out you're gonna make sure that it, it is thin I usually get it secured at the at the top there and then pull it down and secure it to the bottom and then go back up just like so and we can go ahead and wrap this And you want to come up and you want to stop about two eye lengths from the eye of the hook. Go ahead and turn that back over. Now I'm going to take my hackle and I'm going to tie this in by the butt. I've used this one before already so it's a little beat up but it's going to work for this. Go ahead and give it that crew cut.
and take it from the top side and now we can tie this in. Now that that's a little bit long there so I'm gonna trim that. We only need a couple of barbels of the crew cut exposed in order for our thread to have something to hold on to. We're going to take our hackle pliers and put them on there and we're going to wrap this to the rear get a nice palm ring barber pull effect there yeah, four maybe five wraps max and that's this is also going to give it a little bit of a ribbing effect and my hackle pliers came off we're going to bring that right to the rear and now we're going to take our rib and we're going to wind that forward we're still holding on to that uh, hackle to keep it from unwinding go ahead and put a wrap at the back and once you get that in, you can remove your hackle pliers. Now we're going to go ahead and wind this forward. And we're going to palmer that once again. And making, doing this, this way, the elk hair caddis, it is a very, it makes it very stable on the water. It, it's hard for it to sink we get to the head we're gonna go ahead and tie that in with the hackle added into the body it makes it hard for it to to sink so you're gonna make these for your heavy water when you're when you're fishing caddis in in ripples you're gonna use an elk hair caddis I'm gonna go ahead and remove this wire and get a grip on it there we go and now we could go ahead and just break off the uh, hackle from the rear. Now we're going to take some uh, of our Comparadon hair and the amount you want is you'll, you'll get the hang of it after you do a couple. You don't want a real lot and you don't want a little small piece either. So I'm going to take off just maybe about a quarter to three eighths inch clump off the hide. Going to take that and we're going to put it in our hair stacker. And a bunch of them will fall out. But you get your hair stacker and you can see it's uh, filled there. We're going to stack these. Then I'm going to lift my hair stacker slightly, you can see there, and then I hold it in that position, tap it a couple more times, and now when I remove it, I have all my hair lined up and ready to go. Now I can go ahead and remove any stray ones there. I'm going to size it up. I want it just just past the uh, bend of the hook. I'm going to give it a loose loop, pull it straight down, but not real tough yet. Give it another one. And now I'm holding firmly with these fingers. And I want that to flare just a little bit. When I get four or five wraps I'm going to pull the hair in the front and I'm going to wrap directly right in front of it and don't worry a lot see these hairs here they're just gonna pop right off so don't worry a whole lot with them now I'm going to take my scissors 
There we go. These are all front pieces there that I'm pulling off or butt sections. I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to hold that clump up. And when I cut, I'm going to cut right along that same angle as my wing. I like to have a nice head like this and maybe that you can't even see the thread. That just adds that much more floatability to it. And now to tie it off I'm going to use my half hitch tool that is my bodkin the opposite end of the needle go around twice and I'm going to twist it as I'm going because that keeps the tension on the thread. I'm going to push that right up underneath that those hairs. Now again, once, twice, roll it, put it on there, push that right up against those hairs underneath. And that's actually tightening that, that wing up again. And you could do three or four double half hitches in there. And we'll take our poke and snip, remove that excess. Get trim a couple, got a couple of wild ones there. Just be careful of the of your hackle. And turn it over, and I'm going to put the head cement on the bottom. Clean my brush off pretty good. And just hit that bottom with the head cement. And here we have the elk hair or deer hair caddis traditionally tied. And like I said, this is going to be more for heavy water. You're fishing your caddis in ripples. You see, see some caddis splashes. A lot of splashes in the ripples are taking caddis. And you use this. Now I'm going to put in my, put in another hook. I'm going to make Jim's caddis. And this is way simpler than the elk hair caddis. And it's just as effective. Now, same thread. And we're going to put a base of thread down. And this is going to be quick. I'm going to bring that thread back to where it's going to hang just past the point of the hook. Got that wrapped a little bad. There we go. And we're going to turn our hook over. Going to take a little bit of my olive dubbing. This super fine olive. Put it on there. I'm going to stretch that out. Connect the bottom and then go through the middle. A little bit of moisture helps all the time. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this. I got a little bit more dubbing on this one than I did on the previous one. Yeah, a little pudgier body on this. And there we have our body done. Now we're going to just take that same amount of hair or that same amount of deer hair. Like I said, if I have to had to describe it, it would be about a three-eighth inch square off off the hide. Going to had to pluck some of the 
loose stuff off there. I'm gonna gather it together and put that in our hair stacker. Take our hair stacker and I tap it on my knuckle. If you tap it on the table, your wife or children might think that someone's knocking on the door. And then we lift it slightly. Hold that tight. Tap it a couple more times. And then when we take it out, whenever you put hair in the stacker, it's always a good idea to keep that hair going in the direction you're going to put it on the hook. And this is going to go just like that. Going to tighten, grab those butt ends tight. Got to let static electricity in there. We're going to measure this up. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down, loose loop, straight down. Loose loop, straight down. Let that spin just a little bit. Actually move forward on it. Take our hair. Pull that back. Wrap nice and tight up against it. Now this, this hair didn't spin as much as the previous one. Now I'm going to take uh, all of the butt ends and pull them up to the top. And again, we're going to trim that right at that same angle as the wing. Take our half hitch tool, lay it on top, go around twice, two, bring it up, put it underneath the hair. once twice and I'm twisting it as I'm going to keep the tension on it put it under that hair you could actually push that hair back and kind of pack it with your bodkin needle there we go three four double half hitches take your Poke and snip and trim that off. Gonna nip the wild hairs. There we go, and here is my version of the deer hair caddis. This you're gonna use more on more gentle water when the caddis are hatching you can see it's gonna lay very flat in the surface and you don't have to add all of those extra steps you don't have to have the rib you don't have to have the hackle in there and when you're beginning easy is better so I hope that you learned something from this video I hope that you would subscribe to my channel please refer me to your friends Please visit my sponsors, tell them that I sent you, leave comments, questions, suggestions. If you'd like to purchase this or any flies that I make, go to etsy.com slash shop slash the flyman gym. And if you don't see it, just let me know and we'll figure it out. And most of all, thank you very much for watching my videos.